All right, you should be set. All right, thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. We'll call to order the regularly scheduled virtual meeting of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Today is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021, and it is 7.04 p.m. Board members present are uh, Dick Peterson, Kia Baskerville, Elizabeth Conger, and my name is Jimmy Praley. Also present with us tonight are City Attorney uh, Mike Lyles and Deputy City Clerk Cynthia Gaines. First item, uh, has the board had the opportunity to review the minutes of our last meeting on August 4th, 2021? Uh, and if so, are there any additions or corrections? Do I hear a motion? I move, I move it be accepted. I second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The minutes will stand as approved. Uh, before we get to our regular business, I'd like to state for the record that since this is a virtual hearing, anybody wishing to submit public testimony may do so by way of written testimony to be submitted as part of the official record. Anybody wishing to submit written testimony may do so by going to www.annapolis.gov forward slash ABC. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight uh, is a request for an open to the public event number one by the Fleet Reserve Club of Annapolis for the U.S. Sailboat and Powerboat Show. Uh, we have a request for an open to the public event number one with the consumption of alcoholic beverages from the Fleet Reserve Club to be allowed on the property leased by Annapolis Boat Shows. In addition, the request to allow wholesale beer distributor vehicles to park on the premises during the boat shows to be used exclusively for storage purposes. Uh, the dates of the event are October 7th through October 18th, 2021, and the hours requested are from 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., location 100 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Uh, so who do we have here tonight for the Fleet Reserve Club? Porter, General Manager. Hi, Mr. Porter. Can you turn your camera on by any chance? Or are you just, uh, are you just with us tonight via audio? There you go. All right, thanks. Uh, are you going to be the only one here tonight for Fleet Reserve? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. All right, Mr. Porter, why don't you go ahead and just tell us a little bit about your event. I know you guys have done this many times in the past, so just let us know what uh, what you're requesting. Sure. Um, same request that we had approved in 2019. We didn't do 2020, of course. Um, uh, open to the public. It's our, our main fundraiser. Um, allow us to uh, carry beverages sold in the club out into the boat show. Uh, we will have... Uh, staff at the front door so that will not be carried out into the city. Uh, we're very strict on that as uh, is requested. Um, also uh, have the uh, distributor vehicles on the lot, um, but not sell from those vehicles. Um, and we're gonna also add some uh, extra precautions for, for COVID of course, some sanitation stations. Have, uh, so you're not making any changes from the way that you ran the show last year? No. Uh, Back from the not, COVID. Not last year, I'm sorry, 2019. 2019, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> and any, did you have any any issues in 2019 when you last did this? No, no, no issues at all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, do any board members have any questions of Mr. Porter? Uh, Mr. Porter, I mean, this might be kind of redundant, but um, are those who are serving alcohol, I mean, are they all tips uh, trained? Yes, they are, and the ones that aren't will be. Okay. And Mr. Porter, you mentioned the vehicles on the lot. That's strictly for storage purposes, correct? Correct. Any additional questions of uh, Mr. Porter? Okay, Mr. Porter, anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, sir, I think that's it. All right, thank you. Do I hear a motion for this request for an open to the public event number one with the consumption of alcoholic beverages from the Fleet Reserve Club to be allowed on the property leased by the Annapolis Boat Shows in addition to the request uh, to allow a wholesale beer, beer distributor vehicle to park on the premises during the shows to be used exclusively for storage purposes 
Uh, the dates of the event scheduled from October 7th through October 18th, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., location 100 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Yes, Cindy, sorry. Sorry, Jimmy. Can I just ask that you get Mr. Porter's address for the record, please? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Porter. Could you give us your address for the record? Home address. <clears throat> yeah. 617 Admiral Drive, Unit 204, Annapolis. Thank you. All right. Um, does anybody wish to make that motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. All right. Any additional discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, Mr. Porter, your request is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up, we have a request for a special class C one day <coughs> lessons by Marilyn Hall uh, for the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. We have a request for a special class C one day liquor license uh, for the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra scheduled for Friday and Saturday, October 1st and 2nd, 2021 from 6 to 10 p.m. located at 801 Chase Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And Mr. Coughlin, I see you there tonight. Uh, if you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, uh, Dennis Coughlin, 308 North Linden Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland. All right, thank you. And if you could just tell us a little bit about the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Well, they're anxiously, after a, a very difficult COVID year, starting their season. We'll be starting in October, um, hopefully for a nice full season. And we'll be serving uh, beer, wine, and water for about an hour before the concert starts. Uh, they usually do do an intermission about 45 minutes in. We would open up for that, reopen for about that 15 minute time frame. And once they restart their second half of their show, they'll, we will shut it down for the evening. That would be for both Friday night, Friday night and Saturday night. And we do serve right out of one of our art galleries on the second floor. Um, so everybody's kind of contained in one area. We've made our building a little different during this COVID. We're giving people a lot of elbow room, so to speak. So we can kind of keep the congestion out of the hallways and stuff. Okay. And this is pretty much the same setup that you guys have done in the past, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. And I, I, I take it that the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra generally draws uh, a crowd that's over the age of 21. <laughs> yeah, that's a very safe assumption. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Uh, and who do you who do you normally use for for bartenders? Uh, we have we have a volunteer core. Uh, we have a full front of house thing. Uh, most of them, uh, all our bartenders, do get their tip certification. A bunch of them have the, even the crowd management uh, aspect of requirement, um, as well as the the managers. Okay. Uh, do any members of the board have any uh, questions about this event? Nope, hearing none. Uh, do I hear a motion for this request for a special class C one day liquor license to Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts for the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra, which is scheduled for Friday and Saturday, October 1st and 2nd, 2021, from 6 to 10 p.m., located at 801 Chase Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I make the motion. Proof, yeah. I'll second. <laughs> All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. This one is approved. Don't go anywhere, though, because I think we have you next. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Another request by Maryland Hall for a special Class C one-day liquor license for uh, the Marshall Tucker Band presented by Ramshead. Uh, we have a request for a special Class C one-day liquor license to Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts. Ramshead presents the Marshall Tucker Band scheduled on Monday, October 25th. 2021 from 6 to 10 p.m. located at 801 Chase Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Mr. Coughlin, if you could put your name and address on the record again for us, please. Yeah, that's Dennis Coughlin, 308 North Linden Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Thank you. And if you could tell us about uh, this event, if you don't mind. Uh, we will do the same, just the same as we do for the um, Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Uh, we will do serve for approximately one hour before uh, Unfortunately, we don't really know if they're going to do an intermission. Sometimes the Ram Pit group do, sometimes they don't. If they don't do an intermission, we shut down about 10 minutes into the show, and that's it. If they do have an intermission, we shut down once they start 
the first half of the performance and then would reopen for that 15 minute, approximately 15 minute intermission time frame. And then uh, when they restart, we shut it down for good again. Again, still just beer, wine and water, no mixed drinks or anything like that. Served out of the same art gallery in, on the second floor. All right, thank you. Uh, do any of the board members have any questions about this particular event? I'm, I'm just curious because I don't know, uh, but when Rams had does a, a presentation like this and they uh, come to Marilyn Hall and come to you, is that is that is that something that happens often? Is it because of like capacity of people? Uh, more than likely, it's, it's it's surely a capacity thing. Uh, their facility downtown holds approximately, I think, around 300. This is a group that will tend to bring in more than that. So we're not as big as their place up at the casino, which is like 1,500 people. So, and they're like 300. We're seven, we can max out at 725, even though we rarely get to that number. But So we're kind of that middle of the range thing. But we provide all the services. We provide the, our, the bars, the bartenders, our usher core, our front of house manager, everything like that. We provide that. Basically, the, the room rental for them. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? All right, hearing none. Uh, do I hear a motion regarding this request for a special class C one day liquor license to Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts for the Marshall Tucker Band presented by Ramshead scheduled for Monday, October 25th, 2021 from 6 to 10 p.m. located at 801 Chase Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Motion to approve. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations. This one's approved as well. Have fun. Thank you all so much. Have a great weekend and all stay safe. You too. You too. Bye bye. Mr. Chairman. I know what you're going to say. Yep. I need to be recused, please. Sure. Sure. No problem. Uh, all right. Our, uh, our next item is an open to the public event, the second of open to the public event for the Eastport Democratic Club a memorial for Sean Hetrick and fundraiser for AMFM. Uh, we have a request for a second open to the public event with outside beverage service on club property, which is scheduled on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, uh, from noon until 6 p.m., located at 525 State Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Um, and I think... We have Mr. Forney here tonight for the Eastport Democratic Club. All right, Mr. Forney, if you could unmute and turn your camera on uh, when you get a second, that'd be great. Okay, I, I think I unmuted. Yeah, you got the mute part. Could you could you get the camera? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> you know, I'm not computer computer. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Perfect. All right, if you could just state your name and address for the record, and then tell us a little bit about this event. Hi, I'm Dana Forney, address 1603 Bay Ridge Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. And I do have Mary Beth Hughes here as our events coordinator right there. <laughs> just so. I mean, you, could you put your, could you, could you give us your address as well, just so we have it? Eight one, eight one Mary Beth Hughes, 819 Chester Avenue, 21403. All right, thank you. And if you guys just want to tell us uh, about this event. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, it's, uh, it's called Play a Song Music Festival Fundraiser for AMFM, uh, noon to six. We have Pressing Strings, Alexander Peters, Scribe, Kimmy Metz, Kabusi, The Leftovers, and Special Guests. Um, we also have a silent auction planned with pretty much every restaurant in Annapolis, um, including a chef from DC where he used to play, he's coming to cook. Sean Hendricks. Uh, uh, hobo, all tackle. It's just the, the community's really come out. Smokehouse and Dark Horse are 
contributing 50% of their sales that day. Um, and also AMFM, they, their board got together and they decided to launch a bereavement fund um, that would be announced that day and money raised that day uh, on October 3rd would go to that. And you know how important AMFM has been to this community through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I just wanna mention that our other open to public event was canceled due to uh, our band who was vaccinated um, suffering from the Delta variant. And there was another tropical storm coming through. So that was postponed. Um, just wanna let you know that. What else? Uh, and uh, just to let you know, uh, most of our people, especially officers and board are TIPS certified. Uh, we do have people walk around the property checking to make sure everybody keeps inside the barrier. And uh, we're just happy to, to host something so nice. Well, I've, I've also tips trained and crowd control that was required last year and active shooter trained. All right, thank you. And I see you guys are, uh, you guys are doing wristbands for people over the age of 21. Yes. Either that or stamps. Okay. Uh, kind of a stamp might be better uh, I, I'm going for a stamp. <laughs> okay. She's the right. boss. <laughs> well, I do. I do. Yeah, right. I help with tides and tunes down at um, the Maritime Museum as well. So. Gotcha. And and you're gonna make sure that you have people watching this perimeter so that nobody leaves with a with a beer or a cocktail in their hand. It yes. will be fenced. Okay. Okay. All right. Any members of the board have any questions about this event? No. See, Dick doesn't have any questions. So um, why does Dick always run from me when I come out? <laughs> <laughs> You've got that reputation. Um, so, anyways, uh, if, if it, nobody has any additional questions, uh, I'd ask for a motion regarding this request for an open to the public event number two with outside beverage service on club property, scheduled on Sunday, October third, twenty twenty one, from twelve noon to six p.m., located at five twenty five State Street, Annapolis, Maryland, two one four zero three. Motion to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> this request is approved. You guys have fun, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have a uh, request for a final six month extension to pick up an approved liquor license by Social Taco LLC trading as Vita Taco and State House Inn. Uh, request came in for the final six month extension to pick up the approved alcohol, alcoholic beverage license to Social Taco LLC, uh, which this board obviously pre previously approved, uh, which is located at 200 Main Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. The uh, license was approved November 6, 20, uh, excuse me, 2019. Um, and then we've had two extensions thus far leading to our final extension, which would push to April 1st, 2022. Uh, and who do we have here tonight for Social Taco? Alan Hyatt on behalf of Social Taco and the licensees are also present, Andrew Fox and John Miller. Okay, if so we could just get Mr. Fox and Mr. Miller's address for the record. Mr. Fox, I think you're muted. 505 Dewey Drive, Annapolis, Maryland. Thank you. And Mr. Miller, if we could get your address too, please. Also you're muted. muted. Also muted, Mr. Miller. How's that? Yeah, perfect. 706 Arnold, Maryland, 21012. 706, I'm sorry, 706 what? Capri Road. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. No problem. Got, Thank you. I've got my kids in the back. I'm trying to <laughs> keep them quiet. I understand that. I understand that. Um, all right, Mr. Hyatt, uh, why don't you tell us about this uh, request here? Uh, thank you. You may recall that we obtained a modified special exception to allow for a restaurant and patio dining on the state circle side of this uh, property. And um, you know, above it are rooms, it's an inn. 
So right now the rooms at the inn are substantially completed. You know, they're, they're in the uh, uh, final stages of, of uh, completion. You know, there's some flooring that has to go down, painting, some cosmetic type finishes. And the first floor where the restaurant is and the patio, that still needs a little bit more work to be done. The mechanical plumbing and electric is done, but the walls will need to be closed in. The, the reason for the delay is, I'm sure you, you've observed it in many areas, is the supply chain. We can't get materials. We, you know, it's really been a, a stop and start type of a project because we wait for materials and equipment to be delivered and it gets here and then the contractors aren't available. It's just been a, a bit of a struggle, but I think it's in the home stretch. My guess is that this job will be finished by the end of the year but we'd like to have until April 1st because assuming the job is finished by the end of the year, they may not want to open up in January and February and, uh, and might delay until later in March to open up. So uh, I, I think you're going to have a very nice establishment here by the time this opens up. You just have had more delays than, than the applicants had ever envisioned, you know, driven by COVID and all the other problems that you're well aware of. So uh we would respectfully request the extension until the 1st of April to be able to take down the license. And that's really, I, I don't think, unless you have any questions for either Mr. Fox or Mr. Miller, that, that's really the, the story for us. All right, thank you. Uh, do any board members have any questions about this request? I have none. None. Oh, well, hearing none. Uh, do I hear a motion regarding this uh, request for a six month extension on the pickup of an approved alcoholic beverage license to Social Taco LLC trading as Vita Taco and State House Inn located at 200 Main Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it carries. Good luck, guys. All right, thank, thank you. Much, guys, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good night. All right, good night. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, I have lost my video. I think when I recuse myself, he probably canceled my video. <laughs> we don't need to see you, Dick. It's okay. All right, we can hear you. <laughs> there, there we go. go. There we go. All right, uh, I'm going to find items seven and eight on the agenda. Um, these are both requests for um, special class C licenses by the Maryland Cultural and Conference Center. Um, we have two requests for special class C licenses uh, to the Maryland Cultural and Conference Center for the United States Powerboat Show and Sailboat Show uh, with the dates of October 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th for the Powerboat Show and October 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th for the sailboat show. Both requests are from 12 noon to 6 p.m. located at the Breakthrough Tasting Barge VIP Lounge, Ego Alley, Spa Creek, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. And who we have here for the Maryland Cultural and Conference Center. Uh, Ms. Jones, I think, you're, I think you're on mute. Is that better? Yep, much better. If you could just give us uh, your name and address for the record, ma'am. Sure, Sheila Jones, 1262 Steamboat Road, Shadyside, Maryland, 20764. All right, thank you. And if you could just uh, let us know about these requests, what you're planning on doing, um, and then the board can ask any questions that they might have. Sure, thanks. Um, we have a VIP lounge, which I think we've had for the past five or six years. And there are approximately 100 to 125 people a day in there. It's, um, we have um, ID checkers, adults only, and uh, we serve small tastings and actually breakthrough beverage serves the tastings in there as well. They have um, tips, I believe it's called tips. Is that right? Um, um, bartenders and uh, it's fenced off. It's just a fun little, little event. And then the breakthrough tasting tent is separate. And that is where breakthrough 
beverage company is bringing in five brands for tastings only. And again, we have ID checker outside and, um, tip, and they're bringing their own bartenders tips, bartenders. And, and nobody under the age of 21 is allowed in either of these areas? Correct. Okay. Does the board have any questions about these requests? I do. These are two separate areas? Yes, sir. They're beside each other. They are at the end of Eagle Alley, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so you're putting two barges down there? Yes, we have for the past, it used to be um, Hendrix, the Hendrix barge. Uh, Hendrix, the Hendrix was over by the Marriott. And, and the tasting one was down at, at the tip of Eagle Alley. Right, we moved it. It's not at the tip of Ego Alley. It okay, is. so it's going to be next to where the Hendrix was. It's going to be where the Hendrix was, and then the VIP tent on the other side of that dock. Okay. Yeah. So everything's in one area. Any additional questions about uh, the VIP lounge or the, the tasting barge? All right. <laughs> Here none. Uh, do I hear a motion regarding these requests for special class C one day liquor licenses by the Maryland Cultural and Conference Center for the United States Powerboat Show and the United States Sailboat Show, dates being October 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th for the Powerboat Show, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th of October for the Sailboat Show from 12 noon to 6 p.m. located at the Breakthrough Tasting Barge and VIP Lounge on Ego Alley and Spa Creek, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401 and 21403. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it carries. Congratulations, have fun. Thank you so much. Good night. Okay. Another boat show request, uh, we have an extension, a request for an extension of licensed premises uh, for the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel Fall 2021 United States Sailboat Shows, a request to allow the extension of licensed premises to guests for the purchase of alcoholic beverages at the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel to be carried throughout the boat shows uh, to the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel from the fall 2021 United States sailboat shows, October 7th through 10th and October 14th through 18th, 2021, from 12 noon through 6 p.m., located at 80 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And uh, Mr. Townsend, I'm assuming you are here on behalf of the Waterfront Hotel. If you could just give us your name and address for the record, please. Hey, yes, sir. My name is uh, Chris Townsend. I live at 820 Ruckshire Drive, Arnold, Maryland, 21012. I'm the food and beverage director for Pusters in Annapolis and the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel. All right, thank you. If you could just tell us a little bit about your request, please. Yes, sir. Uh, we're asking for permission to do, as we've done uh, historically in the past, to have stations out on the dock um, to be able to serve painkillers and have them carried into the show. Uh, we'll have tip certified bartenders serving all the drinks at all the stations. Uh, we'll also have doormen around checking to make sure that no beverages leave the front of the building. They're all crowd management certified, um, as am I as well. We are also asking permission to have Buck Distributing Park, a beer truck in the valet circle for storage only. It's a small truck. It's the same one we've had um, up there in the past as well. Um, we're also going to be working with the Annapolis uh, Green to reduce our uh, footprint in there as far as having uh, biodegradable cups, and we'll also be having uh, hand sanitizing stations um, around there as well to deal with the COVID things. We're also asking to have the bands upstairs on the patio from one to six on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at those shows. Okay, so it's pretty much the exact same thing you guys have done in the past, right? Yes, sir. We're making no changes other than the sanitizing and the um, biodegradable stuff. Gotcha. And have you had any issues uh, in the past at all that we should know about? No, sir. Any questions by any of the board members of Mr. Townsend? None. <clears throat> All right, hearing none, uh, do I hear a motion regarding this request to allow the extension of licensed premises 
for guests to purchase alcoholic beverages to be carried throughout the boat shows to the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel for uh, the fall 2021 United States sailboat shows with the dates being October 7th through 10th and October 14th through 18th, 2021 from 12 noon through 6 p.m. at 80 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it's approved, Mr. Townsend. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, have a good day. Okay. Next, we have the Annapolis Maritime Museum. We have a request for a special Class C one-day liquor license by the Annapolis Maritime Museum for the Boatyard Beach Bash scheduled on Saturday, September 11th, 2021 from 4 to 10 p.m. located at 723 Second Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. And who do we have here tonight for the Maritime Museum? You have Alice Estrada, my president and CEO, and Mary and Austrian. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Estrada, could you put your address on the record too, just so we have that? And Ms. Austria, I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing when she's done. Sure. And I should know this, should be, this be my personal address or the- Personal Ooh. address is fine. 1764 Rodley Trail, Annapolis, 21401. Thank you. And my address is 207 Marlbrook Road, and that's in Severna Park, Maryland, 21146. All right, thank you. Now, if you could just tell us about the Boatyard Beach Bash, please. Certainly, um, and I'd like to begin by just um, reciting our mission, which is to educate youth and adults about Annapolis's rich maritime heritage and the ecology of the Bay, and we are a nonprofit 501c3. The Boatyard Beach Bash is our largest fundraiser, and of course, like everybody else, we took a hiatus last year in 2020. Um, it is a Key West music fest. Um, we have it established, or we don't, but um, our uh, board member, uh, Dick Franio, Boatyard Bar and Grill, has a longstanding relationship with Pearl Reefers, who are uh, the musicians who play with um, Jimmy Buffett. So the, um, they, as well as some fringe bands, come um, up once a year and do a benefit concert for the museum. Um, it's about the music. It's five hours long. Um, somehow we gets longer and longer, not because well, it's not Mary and I's idea. <laughs> but anyway, um, we um, feel like this is a really well oiled machine. Uh, we, um, and Mary will discuss logistics with you on exactly uh, our, our protocols. But uh, we just, we sell 520 uh, tickets. Our application is for 800 because we do have a hundred or so sponsor tickets. So there is some, some cushion in there. Um, a majority of our guests are sort of seated um, for this. Again, they're very serious about the music um, at this event. And it, it, like the other one, is a zero compost event. So everything will, it will be compostable and zero waste. Mary, do you want to elaborate on some of the logistics? Sure, sure. As, as Alice said, it's it's a mature crowd. It's a Jimmy Buffett crowd. So um, as far as underage, we do ID all individuals that do come through. And we banned 21 and under. Um, um, the bar is run professionally by the Boatyard Bar and Grill. So all bartenders are uh, TIP certified and professional bartenders. And we do have two staff members that have been certified in crowd control. Um, and we've also hired two police, uh, two policemen who will be there to assist um, not only with uh, exiting and entrance, there's one um, entrance, one exit, but they're also there to assist us with parking. They get there early at four o'clock to make sure that we don't clog the streets. That's been a problem that we have since we're at the end of an Eastport street. So they're there to turn traffic around. We do have um, a private parking lot. Uh, it was Muir's Marina. Now, Alice, I'm sorry, what's the name of the marina now? Sweet, uh, Safe Harbor. 
Yeah, safe harbor. So we're using safe harbor. We do have a shuttle that goes back and forth. So that will alleviate any overparking in the Eastport um, neighborhood by us. We've been notified immediate neighbors around us that the um, event is going on. As a matter of fact, we've given them comp tickets. So one of our favorite neighbors, Steve Rogers, has been giving um, comp tickets. And he's a Jimmy Buffett fan, so he's very excited about that. Um, we have, uh, uh, we've also invited local politicians and quite a few aldermen. Um, so we feel we have this event buttoned up. This is our 17th year. Like Alice said, we took a hiatus last year, um, but we feel that we we're, uh, got it pretty well covered. Is there anything I missed? Does anybody have any questions? I do. Okay. Uh, even though Steve's coming to your thing, how do you keep him happy by keeping the the uh, compostable beer uh, glasses out of his yard? Alice? Well, first of all, we do police that. Um, and what he finds in his yard is cans, and we've never served cans. Um, now, the, the police offers in two volunteers stand at the exit with the trash can, and everybody is required to dump their drinks. Um, hook, line, and sinker. Now, now people have started carrying Yeti cups. So we do make them dump their Yeti cup cups, but as I explained, uh, we're not gonna make them throw away their Yeti cups. They're gonna walk away with cups in their hands sometimes, but we do make sure that they dispose of everything and do not walk off property. Now, when you talk about an exit, is that a gated exit or is that just? Well, there's only one way out. It is on second street. So I wouldn't say it's gated, but you're, you know, the there's it's four people there that you can't get past them. I have witnesses firsthand, so I get it. Okay, thank you. You guys do a very, very good job. So, yeah, you guys thank have very much. Have it down thank to a science these days. Um, yeah. Anybody else have any other questions about this event? All right. Well, hearing none, uh, I'd entertain a motion regarding this request for a special Class C one day liquor license. For the Annapolis Maritime Museum Boatyard Beach Bash, uh, scheduled on Saturday, September 11th, 2021, from 4 to 10 p.m. at 723 Second Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 2143. I make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Stands approved. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up is Warrior Events. We have uh, an application for the consumption of alcoholic beverages on the property, uh, including live music, to Warrior Events for the Navy Retirement Ceremony and Brunch, which is scheduled on Saturday, September 11, 2021, from 11 to 12.30 p.m., uh, located at Susan Campbell Park, City Dock, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And who do we have here tonight for the warrior events? Hi, this is John O'Leary. Can you all hear me? Yep. Hi, Mr. O'Leary. Could you just give us your address uh, for the record and then, you know, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the event. Sure. John O'Leary, president of warrior events. My address is 1201 Crummel Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. The event is a retirement of a Navy commander who is a classmate of mine at the Naval Academy. It's basically our company from the Academy, 30, 40 people at uh, the request is for uh, it to be at City Dock on Susan at Susan Campbell Park in a space of about 50 feet by 50 feet. Um, it's from 11 to 1.30. The request is for alcohol to be there, mostly for a, uh, a cheers upon his retirement. Um, the commander's name is Carl, uh, Commander Carl Parks. This event was to coincide with the Annapolis St. Patrick's Parade that I also run and had moved to this date that weekend, but we have since uh, canceled it and are going to just continue that in March, hopefully. Um, so when we had the event in on this September 11th weekend, um, my classmate and friend, 
was retiring. We had the staging and the tents and all of that set up and said, hey, we've got a built in environment for you. You're welcome to use it. And then, of course, when we canceled everything, we reduced. We do not have a stage. We do not have a tent. We do not have a thousand people. We have 30 to 40 people and a cheers at the end of the event. Got it. Um, now, you said the event goes till 1.30. The application that you presented has it till 12.30. I just want to make sure we know. Um, I, 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 I misspoke. It's only till 12.30 because okay. it's the same day. And, and that's a good question. It's the same day as the Air Force game at which the majority of everyone that's at this retirement will be racing off to go to the stadium. Sure. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Um, and you said it's just for a toast. Is there, are there going to be, uh, is it just a glass of champagne or are there going to be other beverages available throughout the brunch? There will be other uh, beverages available. It's a full bar available. Um, I don't think that all 30 folks, I mean, there's some children there, you know, uh, family members. I think the majority of the, or not the majority, but about 15 of people will actually be drinking. Um, so yeah, I, I say toast, but um, it's uh, also being served by a by Adam's ribs. I think some of the folks on the panel know, know Sean well, who will be the bartender's tip serve and crowd control, uh, I mean, uh, certified and crowd control certified as well, as, as am I with my events companies. Great. Uh, any other, uh, any questions of Mr. O'Leary? Nope. All right, uh, hearing none, uh, is there a motion regarding this request for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property to include live music, for the warrior events uh, for the Navy, excuse me, for a Navy retirement ceremony and brunch scheduled on Saturday, September 11th, 2021 from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. located at Susan Campbell Park, City Dock, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Stands approved. Enjoy. Enjoy. Right, thank, thank you all. All right, thanks. All right. Next up, we have a Stanton Center application. Uh, we have a request for uh, an application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property at the Stanton Center with dancing music to Domingo Lucero 50th birthday party. Uh, that's scheduled for Saturday, September 25th, 2021 from 3 p.m. until 12 midnight, located at 92 Washington, West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And who do we have here uh, for this application? Um, I'm Domingo Villa's daughter. Okay. Um, so right now he's working. He's not with me, but he told me to like translate for him to tell okay. him. Yeah. So the party, yeah, it's gonna be a fifty. <laughs> Sorry, before you, before you get started, we just want to make sure we get your address. Um, oh yeah. Two, please. Uh, a thousand Madison Street, apartment E6, twenty one four zero three. Okay, and your and your full name, please. Um, Amarillis Villa. Great. All right, thanks. Sorry to interrupt you, but go ahead. Um, so there will just be like dancing and like we'll just be celebrating with the family. So and then I don't know really what else to say. <laughs> to okay. Well, uh, I see here you're going to have uh, two security guards. Who's providing the security for you? Do you know? Um, the people from the Stanton, Stanton Center, or whatever. they okay. said, yeah. They put you in touch with somebody? Yeah. All right. And it says here on the application that you're expecting about 200 people that, for this event. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And how are you going to make sure that, uh, that nobody under the age of 21 is, is drinking? Well, I'm pretty sure we'll pretty sure like people's parents i don't think no one will let them drink anyone younger or whatever okay um you gonna have do you know if you're gonna have bartenders at the event um i don't think so no okay okay all right does the board have any questions about this application 
what kind of liquor, what, what type of alcoholic beverages are you going to be serving? Um, mostly just um, Modelo, I think it's called. Beer? Yeah. And yeah, that's all probably. And the guests, the guests are bringing their own, right? Um, no, we're, we're buying it, like the whole for everyone. Okay, so the application says that it's going to be provided by the guests. So, yeah. Okay, so so you're providing the Modelo's for the guests at no charge. Yeah. I think we probably want to amend that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's very unclear to me who's actually going to be serving this alcohol, uh, and that concerns me when it comes to. Uh, potentially having younger people there. So I think this has got to be tightened up a little bit before I can, you know, remotely agree. Can I request that you move closer to your camera so that oh, we can yeah. see? So if you are providing, if you guys are going to be providing the beers for everybody, how are they going to get them? Is there just going to be a cooler? How are you going to we need to make sure that there's some mechanism in place to prevent underage people from drinking. Well, That's mostly only adults. So the beers will be in the kitchen and all the like adults, they'll be there like just like serving it for people. Awesome. Yeah. Where, where is the where is the regulation? Uh, you know, if 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 the adults are just handing it out, we don't know if these adults are tip trained or, you know, it's just there doesn't seem like there's a lot of oversight here. And that's my concern. Um, well, usually I'm pretty sure like the people that we're like inviting, they're not people like who would give people who are underage. Like they know, they know they're, they're responsible. Like they wouldn't serve it like to people. We, we need a little better reassurance than that. Okay, if you could tell us that you're going to have, you know, a bartender that's tip trained and security standing close by, or, or that you're checking IDs and, and putting wristbands on the people that are under 21. Uh, this is pretty much what we insist on for these special events, that there is some, some way that that is monitored. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, I, I don't know how to really explain it. Um. Well, with all, with all due respect, listen, I know that the people at the Stanton Center, um, you know, if you say that they're going to have security and, and people are going to be there, I mean, yeah, they, they, they've held parties before, hosted parties before, but um, this is a party pertaining to your party. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, without any assurances or, or any real plan uh, for this party, um, it's, it's I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know how, uh, I'm just not hearing what I need to hear that, that their minors aren't gonna be even accidentally served. You follow me? Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I don't, I don't know, because I don't know if you guys were supposed to speak with me or, like, the owner from there, because probably she would have explained it better than me, because I'm not really sure on what I'm supposed to say, because she was like, when I went to the office, she was like, you guys are just going to ask me, like, my address and, like, where the party is. I didn't think this was all, like, going to be like this. Sure. No, no, no. I, and I understand that. I'm sorry if you were misled in any way as to... Uh, types of questions that the board is going to yeah. ask, but we, you know, we control, we control the the the, I guess, yeah. distribution of alcoholic beverages of these. You're you're asking for an ability to serve alcoholic beverages, which is really a special request, and we just want assurances that there aren't going to be problems with this event, um, and saying that there's going to be a cooler of beers in a kitchen and I promise we won't serve an underage person. It, it just, it doesn't really cut it. We, we need to know more. I mean, maybe, maybe 
Uh, your, your dad knows more about what's going to happen. I know you said that you're here to really translate for him, but we need mm -hmm. some type of assurance um, on this, you know, uh, on this party, what is going to be done, really. Um, you know, wristbands, having a actual bartender who's going to be checking identifications before passing out these beverages. Um, we just haven't heard anything that would indicate there's some sort of a restriction. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'm also reading that they're, they're expecting up to 200 people and it's going to be from 4 p.m. until 12 midnight. I wish your dad were here so we could yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's, that's a, this is a situation. This is not just your average everyday house party. I mean, this is going to require a little bit more uh, effort in terms of even security and, and people uh, licensed to serve alcohol. So I don't, I really don't see how, um, at least I can vote for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and the party is set for September 25th, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not we're not meeting again until after the party. Um, so my suggestion was gonna can can you can you push the party a little bit and then maybe we can get you on the agenda in October if you have a better understanding of what's going to be taking place. Cause uh yeah, sorry, Cindy. Um, so these parties to the Stanton Center are booked entirely by the Stanton Center staff, and we're just sent the information. Um, so if, if the board would be willing, what about if the board suggests something that she could do, like wristbands, and then I could make sure that that happens so that she could have the party when it's scheduled? Yeah, I would, I would suggest that at a bare minimum, we have a designated bartender who's going to be checking IDs. Um, and we have that person's name for our record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would, potentially 200 uh, people, it might require more than one bartender. It might, it might require more than one, yeah. Um, and I would, also, I would also suggest that there be, uh, as Cindy said, wristbanding or stamping for those over the age of 21. Those are pretty simple things that we can put in place. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't take that much cost or effort to effectuate. Um, what I can do is I can speak to the, the Debbie Odom who books these events and make sure that these two things, the wishes of the board, are, are handled. And perhaps I'll even get her to send an email to confirm that they are going to be taken care of. Yeah, that's what I was going to request, Cindy, that you, that, you, know, you reach out to Debbie. Okay. I see down here that they have well security or dash elite security yeah uh, i don't know either yeah me neither but i mean if, if the board i i would make a motion that we approve this on the contingency that you know it's reached out to debbie and she makes them understand what's what's needed Mm -hmm. Because Cindy's correct, you know, they have a lot of these things there and they, they, they certainly know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Well, do we want to, and should, before, before we, we put it to a formal motion, do we, my suggestion would be that we require designated bartenders. Um, yeah. And so we have those names for our records and would even go so far as to require wristbanding um, and make sure that. Cindy, if you wouldn't mind reaching out to the Stanton Center and letting them know that those are requirements okay. uh, for this board. So, you know, Dick, if you would want to make the motion, I, uh, you know, we could make a contingent on the wrist banding and designating bartenders. No, it's de definitely contingent on, on at least those two things. So I'll get those documents and then I will forward a copy to the board members once it's done so you guys know that it's taken care of. That'd be fantastic. All right, so um, Dick, do you want to make that into a formal? I, I make the motion contingent on providing the names of a, a minimum of two bartenders, plus the promise that risk banding on everyone over 21 and that those risks are being checked. Do I hear a second? Second. I'll second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, ma'am, uh, this is approved contingent on those conditions that you heard of. Um, if, you're, if your father has any questions, I'd suggest that he, uh, he reach out to Ms. Gaines um, for clarification, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lyles, you look like you were anxious to jump in there. <laughs> Well, it is a public building. Exactly. So I, I have a dual role in this particular case to ensure that the city doesn't bear the brunt of any liability should uh, things go wrong. Yeah. But um, I appreciate you guys taking care of it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, all right. Well, uh, that's the last of our items before the executive session. So with that, I would move that we leave and reconvene in an executive session. Fire second. 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 All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.